Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three.
Test, test. Good afternoon, everyone. So glad that you're here today for this exciting lecture from our own Bob Gossman. Bob is an engineer, retired at this time, and we're very fortunate that we have had him as a volunteer here for how many years? Since, uh, since the very beginning. And Bob is a, a real renaissance man. He has a lot of talents. He is uh, he, right up front here, ladies, thanks so much. Uh, but he is a renaissance, true renaissance man. I'll make a pitch. Uh, you've got the, uh, you're going to be on the stage with the Pump House Players, and that's going to be, what are the show times? Uh, it starts December 6th every week for three weekends, uh, called Closed for the Holidays. It's like a Hallmark Christmas movie for, for the family. So. So a little bit of a segue there, because we also have our uh, PJ party coming up December 6th. So that's mm -hmm. going to be a wonderful uh, day of activities and uh, especially uh, just a lot of fun things. So please, please, please check out our website. We have all kinds of different things that are listed there, the upcoming for the holidays and into 2020, which we're looking forward to. So at this time, I'd like to uh, give a formal welcome and introduction to our own Bob Gossman. All right, thank you, Ms. Canty, and thanks, everybody, for coming. Who here is in favor of making work easier? Woohoo! Yeah, well, that's what we're going to talk about today, is how to make work easier, but also our goal or our objective for today is when you leave this room, you're going to look at your everyday world completely differently, because just about everything we do has some sort of simple machine associated with it, and that's what we're going to look at are the six basic uh, simple machines. Now, to start off with, uh, let me ask you, what is, what's your definition of a, of a machine, of a simple machine? And when I talk about machines, I'm not talking about electronic computers, calculators. I'm talking about machines that do physical work, like uh, bulldozers or... Uh, uh, cranes or something like that. So what's your definition? Yes, sir? A what? A pulley. A pulley? Okay, that could be one. But what's the definition? That's an example. Great example. What's the definition? How would you define what, a if someone asked you, young lady, what is a machine, what would you say? Uh, something that makes work easier to do. Something that makes work easier to do? Okay, good. And that is exactly that is exactly right. Simply put, simple machines are devices with very few, if any, moving parts, but they make work easier. But that brings us to the next step. What is work? How do you define work? And this is a question for you all. All right? How would you, Tyler, how do you define work? Okay, you've got, you've, got a half, you've got the first half. It's a force. All right, so that's an excellent answer. 
But there's another piece to it, and that is it's a force. Work is a force applied over a distance. So to do work on an object, you are applying a force to it to move it. So just raising this bottle up about three feet, I did work on this bottle. I, I exerted a force on it, and I moved it. All right, make sense? All right. So it's a very simple equation. Work equals force times the distance that that object has moved. And we have specific units uh, when you're actually calculating the work. Uh, one unit is the joule, which is a newton of force applied over a meter of distance. And a newton is about, one newton of force is about the weight of, a, of an apple. All right, so it's, it's very small. The other one is called uh, foot pounds. So it's how many pounds of force over how many feet you moved it. Very simple. But with our machines, machines help us, or machines make work easier by allowing you to use less force to move the object. But based on our equation, if you're using less force, what has to increase? Something has to change. What is it? Now, if the force, if the force goes down, what has to happen to the distance? it's got to go up because you're still doing the set amount of work. All right? So we don't get something for nothing. It's a trade-off. But the work, even though we do the same amount of work on an object, it can be easier because we're using less force. All right? And that is the, uh, that's the whole purpose behind these six simple machines that we're going to talk about. Now, the simple machines that we are going to talk about, and we're going to do a bunch of demonstrations here, is a lever, a wedge, a wheel and an axle, an inclined plane, a screw, and, as someone said earlier, a pulley. Now, what we're going to start with is a lever. And uh, levers were really, it, levers were probably the very first simple machine that was ever invented. Uh, we don't know exactly when, but it's thought simple machines were invented back in the early Stone Age, somewhere around 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. It's the, very, it's the very first thing. And there was a Greek scientist named Archimedes who said, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I can move the world. And you know, that is very close to being true. You're literally not going to move the earth, but you can move tremendously heavy objects with a, le with a simple lever. Now, for example, did you know that a 50-pound child could lift a 200-pound man? with a lever. And we can show that mathematically. I, don't, I didn't go out and find a 50-pound child and a 200-pound uh, man to bring up here. But here, here's the example. Notice the lever. Okay, Where's the child? He's way out on the end. In fact, for a 50-pound child to lift a 200-pound man, you would have to have a lever 15 feet long, and that little baby would be about 10 feet in the air. But put that weight on there and put the 200-pound man on the short section, the, uh, that, that small child could lift a 200-pound man. And that's the basis for all levers, whether you're looking at um, uh, cranes, things out in our uh, parking lot, anything that lifts, forklifts, it's the same basic concept. I was actually going to make that go up and down for a while, but I hit the wrong button. So a lever consists of three parts. Every lever consists of three parts. You've got the load, that's what you're trying to lift. You've got the effort, that's the force that you're applying. 
And then you've got the pivot point, which is the, uh, the fulcrum. And I've got an example of a simple lever here. Notice, is this, is this lever equal distant from the fulcrum? No, why not? It's balanced, why, why isn't it the equal distance? What, what's different from one end to the other? Yeah, I've got a little cup here. That's adding weight. But what I could do is if I add, you know, from here, if I add the wiffle ball, look what happens. You know, I add some weight to it. But I can just move the lever over just a little bit. I made this side longer, so the weight on this half balances out the weight here and it makes it very easy to lift. But I could uh, even do something more. Tennis ball, same thing. Just move the lever out a little bit, whoops, and it should theoretically, theoretically balance. But we can even get uh, a little more creative. What if we put a can of soda out here? All right, see how it balances. So, what we're, what we're effectively showing here is that this little tennis ball can apply sufficient force to raise this can of Coke, even though the tennis ball is a lot lighter. Does that make sense? All right, so let me ask you a question. That's a can of regular Coke. What if I put Diet Coke in there with less calories? What's it gonna do? What? You think it's going to be the same thing even though it's got fewer calories? Let's see. As I uh, got to get it in the right spot here. We've got to get it in the right spot. There you go. So yeah, even though there's fewer calories, it works. All right. But now, if we take a look at uh, this lever, what I'm going to do is, just so this doesn't go flying out into the audience, I'm going to put a couple screws back in it. And... Uh, because our, our, uh, our ancestors, back a few hundred years ago, used to use a lever to do some great damage. So if we have it like this, what does this look like now? A catapult. Absolutely. Let me aim it away from the children, but yeah, we can, we can catapult a tennis And yes, I want my tennis ball back. All right? But yeah, a simple, a catapult is nothing more than a simple lever. Did you find the ball? Thank you, sir. Well done. All right. But a, a catapult is a simple lever. That's our first, uh, that's our first simple, uh, simple machine. So did you know that even your body the human body has levers on it. All right. Where would be the lever on your body? Where would you have a lever? Yes, sir. Your arm. Exactly right. So why don't you stand up here? Okay? Just stand up here right in the center, all right? And turn around and face, face them. So if I point, um, hold, your, hold your arm out uh, in front of you. There you go. Now, where would, be the, where would be the load on your arm that you want to lift? Right at your hand. Perfect. Where is the fulcrum or the pivot point? Your elbow. Outstanding. And where is the effort? Where's the muscle at? Perfect. You got it. Give him a hand. He's, he's got it. Well done. All right. But we have a lot of other levers. And I, from what I understand, uh, Tyler has been dying to come up and do a demonstration for us. So Tyler, why don't you come up here? We're going to have you do a demonstration of a lever that I guarantee every single one of you have at home. So come on up on stage. All right? All right. Mom, this may not happen at home, but I can guarantee we're going to get him to do it here. All right? So Tyler, come over here. My, my stage is very messy. Sweep it up. All right. Well done. 
Tyler is using a lever, all right? So where is the fulcrum on your lever? Yep, that hand's the fulcrum, and what is that hand? The force. That's the force, and then you're using that to, to sweep, the load, to sweep, all right? So again, an example of just simple, everyday objects are, like a broom, are actually machines, all right? So, now, are you an expert at using a simple machine, the broom? But you, okay, is that good enough, Mom? He can sweep up at home? All right, very good. Thank you, Tyler. Well done. Okay, so now we've got an idea of what a lever is. It's basically a stick with a fulcrum or a pivot point. So now I'm going to ask you to use your imaginations what kind of things at home, or that you see at home, would qualify as a lever? And uh, we're not going to, I'll take the broom so you can't use that as an example. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Yes, sir. How so? That is, that is related to a lever, but we're going to get to that uh, next. But you're, you're getting the concept. Yes, ma'am. In the yellow. Oh. A mop? Yes. What else? Yes. A shovel. A shovel. Outstanding. How did you know? Yeah. The shovel, this is actually two different simple machines put together. And we're going to talk about the other one. But once you get the shovel in, you're going to typically you pry it, you know, pry the dirt out or whatever you're digging. So your fulcrum would be down here. Here's your effort. Yes, ma'am. A hatchet. If it's attached to your arm, yes. Okay, good. Well, I've got some other examples up here. All right, some examples of levers. The teeter-totter we've talked about, right? That's kind of what we've got going here. Boat oars or canoe paddles. That's a simple machine. You know, even, even in the olden days of uh, you know, uh, the Roman Empire, where they had all those people rowing the boats, all those people were on those oars were, were levers. All right, let's see what else we got. What's that? Nail clipper. All right, so on the nail clipper, where is the fulcrum? Ladies, what do you think? Where's the fulcrum on the nail clipper? Yeah, it's right at the, right at the pivot point near the tip where you... So why is the fulcrum near the tip of the, of the cutting part and not further back? Why? Yes, and the further back it is, the more effort you need. You wouldn't be able to cut your nails because they're, they're pretty tough, and that's why you need that leverage. Okay, so you, um, you've got that long handle. Let's see. A bottle opener. Did you ever think of a bottle opener as a simple machine? No, but that's one. Let's see what else we got. The shovel we talked about. How about scissors? Scissors are actually two levers combined. And you can see up there where the fulcrum is. That's where the little screw goes in. The force you apply is the handle. And then the force that's produced is at the tip. Right. Any questions about levers? No? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, say it again. It could be. Yeah, it could be. All right. All right. Any other questions? Because we're going to talk about uh, another one that's uh, uh, another simple machine here called an inclined plane. All right. And an inclined plane 
is really, it's just a ramp. Okay? So, uh, all it does is you take less force to move an object uh, to a higher elevation, but you do it over a greater distance. All right? So, for example, uh, let, me, let me ask you, young lady, okay, stand up. Okay? So, here's what I want you to do. I want you to climb up on stage here. Ugh. How's that? Okay, now step down carefully. Now, why don't you walk around and come up the stairs? All right? Which was easier on your legs? The stairs. Okay, so the stairs were easier. She raised herself up, what, about three feet onto the stage. In which one did she do more work? The first time climbing up or climbing up the stairs? It's the same amount. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, yeah. She did the same amount of work. She raised herself up off the ground three feet. Or sign. She had to walk up probably about four feet. She had to move herself four feet up the ramp to do that same amount of work. So less force, but more distance. All right. What's your name? Mariella. Mariella? Well, thank you. Thank you for being, you can, you can go back to your seat now. All right. I had a pail of rocks that I was going to do this demo with, but I didn't think anything could lift it. Because um, I was Using these ramps, these inclined planes, to bring objects up, this is a, uh, a simple machine that dates back three, four, five thousand years. Basically, it's how the pyramids were built. You know, those pyramids are several hundred feet high. The Egyptians didn't just raise those two-ton blocks straight up. They had to build ramps to slide them, and they also used wheels to... to uh, make it quite a bit easier. Um, but, so let me ask you, what are some other examples of ramps or inclined planes that you see? What kind of, what, what, what do you see as inclined planes at home? What is it? Uh, wait, I, I've called in you. Yes, yes ma'am. What's that? A driveway? Yeah, if your driveway is, yeah, you don't want to have to go in and have a crane pick up your car. No, it's just a simple slope if your driveway is sloped. All right, what else? Because there's a bunch of them. You've probably seen a, a, a few today. Oh, yes, sir. A what? How is a Hot Wheels track an inclined plane? If it's going downhill? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's an inclined plane. All right. Yes, ma'am. Or yes, sir. You are, you know, how'd you get so smart? Just always say mama made you smart. It's a good, safe answer. All right? But no, you're right. Do, when you're driving through the mountains, does the road go straight up the mountain, or does it kind of wind around and go back and forth? It's more of a gentle slope. It's easier on your, on your vehicles. All right? So some of the other examples. We talked about the ramp. There's a, there's a lift to get people up the side of a mountain. How about the stairs in your home? The stairs in your home are an inclined plane. Otherwise, you're going to have to be climbing straight up to get to your bedroom. No, it's easier to walk up this inclined plane. Anybody remember uh, back when they would uh, get on the slides in the playground? An inclined plane, absolutely. 
or even a stepladder. Anything that's angled, any, any kind of ramp, right? that is an inclined plane. All right. Any other thoughts on, any ideas I should ask, ask you, any ideas of how else an inclined plane is used? Any ideas? And I'm looking at Miss Canty's group right here. What do you think? No, I notice now all of their eyes just averted down. Nobody will make eye contact with me. That's okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. A roller coaster? Yep. Yeah, the the pitch on your roof. Yeah, it's an inclined plane. Um, now that's the it's the pitch, it's the ramp. But then I would ask, how does the roof make work easier? All right. So, yes, ma'am. Excellent answer. Yes, the dump truck is used to that inclined plane. They raise up that that uh, uh, bed of that dump truck to unload everything. It makes life a lot easier. Excellent answer. Yes. Yeah. See, now you're getting the idea. Now you're starting to look at the world a little differently. Perfect answer. One more. Escalator. Yep, an escalator. An escalator, yeah, because it just, you just stand there. You don't even have to use your legs to climb up. That's, a, that's an excellent answer. But again, another example of a simple machine. So the next one that we talk about is a screw. Now, a screw. You know what a screw is, right? Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got a couple of them in the board here, okay? Um, but a screw, believe it or not, is related to an inclined plane. And this is where it gets a little tricky, all right? But a screw is an inclined plane wrapped around an axle, okay? And in fact, this is a pump. It's an Archimedes pump. Remember Archimedes, that Greek, uh, that Greek scientist? He used a screw as a water pump. And you can see, if you look at the picture, you can see that there's an inclined plane kind of wrapped like a spring around an axle. And you turn the axle, and the inclined plane will travel upwards and move move the water. But uh, uh, there's a lot of different examples of a screw. Now, let me ask you, before we get into the examples, is it easier to take a screwdriver and turn a screw into the wood or a hammer and actually pushing it, something in? Which uses less force? What's that? I'm, I'm hearing your rumblings. Say it loud. Well, no, which uses less, which is, yeah, the screwdriver, yes. The screwdriver uses less force than having to take a hammer, hitting it hard, or trying to push it in with your hand. Why does the screw take less force to turn in versus pushing a nail in. Why is that? So what you're saying is that by turning it, you're using less force, but you have to go a greater distance. Even though you put the hammer or the, the, and the screw in the same distance in the wood, by turning the screw, you're going a greater distance, but you're using less force. So the work is the same, but it's less force to use the screw. Yes, ma'am. Those little lines are the inclined plane. All right, great example. All right, there are several examples of screws in everyday life. All right, nobody should have any problems giving me some examples. So, give me some examples of screws that you see in everyday life, besides a, a screw that goes into a piece of wood. Someone caught the hint. 
Yeah. Did you know your, the bottle cap is a screw? Okay. What's that? Okay. The bottle cap. So that's a good one. All right. What else? Yes, ma'am. A propeller. Almost. Yeah, not quite. Not quite, though. That's, that's a simple machine. We're going to talk about that one in a little bit. Yes? No, not a gear. All right. How about, well, we talked about the screws and we talked about the bottle caps. All right. Moms, you should get this one. Some moms should get this one, I should say. I know my wife does this. There you go, the corkscrew. So I heard it over here. Yes, a corkscrew. The screw part that goes into the cork, all right, that is a screw. Along those same lines, uh, drill bits. Drills that you use to make holes in things. Those are screws. What else? Can Not a can opener. I right, can opener, remember we talked about, that's a, that's a lever. Yes. Screwing in a light bulb. Outstanding. That's an example of a screw. Yes? I'm sorry? A desk chair. Oh, yes, yeah, the, the, with the swivel seat. Yeah, yes, perfect. All right? Let's see. How about your water faucet? Now, I'm not talking about the one with the lever that lifts up, but I'm talking about, like, your bathroom ones that... Uh, that you turn. That's actually a screw because what happens is when you open it, uh, when you open the faucet, there's a screw that lifts the plug out of the water pipe. When you turn it closed, there's a screw that puts the plug back into the water pipe. So that's an example of a screw. Yes, ma'am? Okay, that's a lever. Oh, when you're twisting. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Oh, chapstick. I thought you said chopstick. All right, I'm getting old. I'm retired. Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, you'll think of it. That's okay. In the middle. Where am I looking? Oh, yes, ma'am. If the doorknob will move in or out, but the doorknob is actually something a little different, and we're going to talk about that one. Yes, ma'am. Yes, the lid on nail polish. Great answer. Oh, that you turn? Okay, I'm thinking of the other ones. Thank you for that. Yes, so that yes, the ones that you turn. Yes, there are. There's a screw in there too. Okay. Yes, sir. If you have to twist it, yes. Yep, that would be one. Excellent answer. All right, so there's a lot of screws uh, that we use in everyday life. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to what we call a wedge. And a wedge is related to an inclined plane. What, uh, but the difference between a wedge and an inclined plane is a wedge is two inclined planes back to back. And it has a completely different purpose. See, that's the other difference between these machines. Even though they're related, they have completely different purposes. So uh, the purpose of a wedge is really to split things, split objects. So for example, what I've got here I brought it from home, is chopping wood. I don't know if, how well you can see this, all right, but this is a log splitter. And notice I've got, I've got my sharp edge here, but see how it tapers out this way and tapers out that way. That is a wedge, and it's used to split things. It's used to split, uh, in this case, wood, but wedges in general, uh, are used to just split objects because you put a downward force 
and that wedge will separate. Now, there's a lot of different wedges out there. I'll give you a hint. One, one wedge out there is a knife. All right? A cooking knife is a wedge all right? because it's got the sharp edge. And some cooking knives or some knives at home you really have to take a close look at. You may need a uh, magnifying glass. But uh, if you look, look at the sharp edge, you'll see that it flares out a little bit. And that's why a knife is able to cut through, through meat, cake, whatever you're cutting. Is, uh, that's an example of a wedge. So given that, there's some other utensils that would be considered wedges. If you're typically, uh, if you're typically using a knife to cut something or you're, you're eating dinner, you've got a knife, and what else do you have? A fork. Did you know that a fork is a wedge? Yes, ma'am. Why is a fork a wedge and not a lever? Depend, it depends on how you use it. Okay? So a fork is a wedge when you stick it in because that's how it's able to get through whatever it is you're, you want to stab with it. All right? So it's yeah, so it, it is purpose related. All right? Now, if you're then using the fork to lift it up, combine it with your hand, now it's a lever. All right? But the tines on the fork, and maybe I should have been more specific, but the tines on the fork are the wedges. Okay? Did, did you ladies know uh, that a fork is a machine? No? You do now, though, right? Yeah. All right? Yes, sir? Would a shovel be a wedge? Outstanding answer. Yes. Yes. Because, well, so you tell me, why is, you're absolutely right, why is a shovel a wedge? You, it has to be able to get into the dirt so that you can pry that dirt up. All right? So you can see that uh, the sharp edge, and uh, it's, it's hard to see where you're at, but it does flare, so that gives you, that, that lets it penetrate into the ground. Outstanding answer. I love that. All right? What else? What other wedges do we have? How about, yes, ma'am? A doorstop? Well, a doorstop, yes, a doorstop is an inclined plane. We're using wedges in two, we're using the term wedge as two different things. You know, we, we typically say the, the doorstop is a wedge because we wedge it under there. But from the classical, a wedge really splits objects. Okay, yes, ma'am? The sharp edges of a scissors. That's great. Yes. Remember the picture of the scissors. You've still got the sharp edge. They have to be able to uh, cut. So yes. Yes, ma'am. A crowbar. Yeah, if you're wedging underneath the crowbar here and, and prying things up. Yeah, you've got to wedge it under there. Yes, ma'am. A pickaxe. Yep, you guys are getting it. Yes. A what? Weed puller. Yeah, I'd have to see what that weed puller looked like. Yeah. Yes, sir? An arrow. An arrow, the tip of an arrow. Oh, you got it now. All right. How about, I didn't hear someone name that, call that. Yeah, that's a different type of wedge. Sorry. My idea of humor. When I was Googling images of wedges, this is what came up. I had to change my website. All right. The axe you talked about, and how about nails? Yeah, the tip of a nail is considered a wedge. Yes, sir. A spear, yeah, just like an arrow. Yep, well done. Well done. So those are wedges. Now, what we're going to do, uh, we've got a few more minutes here. Let's move over to probably the second most important invention in human history, and that is the wheel and the axle. All right? And they believe the wheel was invented somewhere around 3500 
to 5,500 years ago. And wheels are used, wheel and axles are used to transfer the effort from one wheel to the axle or vice versa. Oops. And wheels are actually kind of related to levers. Remember we talked about that the, the longer the lever, the easier it is to move a heavy object? Well, with a wheel, the larger the wheel, the easier it is all right, to move an object because you're getting more leverage. There's a greater radius. The larger the radius on the wheel, the easier it is to move that object. So, you know, think back to the, think back to the movies of the old, the old Western movies. You've got your covered wagons. Did they have little bitty wheels or did they have great big wheels? Great big wheels. It's easier for those to turn. Now, you look at, you look at your car, a wheel and an axle on your car. You've got the, uh, you've got the axle which may be this big, turning a wheel this big. Now, it will take a lot of effort to turn that axle, but one turn of that axle may be a circumference of it about that long. But turning a 20-inch wheel, one turn of that 20-inch wheel is going to be about 70 inches. So that's why cars typically will get better gas mileage with larger wheels, right? Because the radius on the wheels are bigger. And, it, and you're getting that, what we call, mechanical advantage. You know, just like the picture on the left, you've got a uh, wheel and an axle uh, with well, uh, pulling up a, a bucket of water from a well. You've got a large wheel, which gives you a lot of leverage to lift up that heavy that heavy bucket of, uh, of water. Now, there's a lot of examples of wheels, and some of them don't look like wheels to you. So, for example, I've got a screwdriver. This screwdriver is a wheel. Because, remember, what a wheel is. A wheel turns around a center axis. All right. So if I've got a board here, I've got a screw on top, and I want to turn it, I want to turn it with the screwdriver. I have to use quite a bit of force to turn this, all right? Because the radius, I have to use a lot of force because the radius on the handle of my screwdriver is pretty small. But if I get a larger handled screwdriver, Oops, wrong one. Um, it's a lot easier. Now I can turn it. But then we go one bigger. You've got a wrench. A wrench is not a lever, but a wrench, when you're turning a bolt, is a wheel. So remember how hard it was to use a screwdriver on this, on this top one. If I take a ratchet, now all of a sudden, it's a lot easier to turn. And the wheel part is the handle. That's the wheel turning. So a wrench is a wheel. Again, a simple wrench, just a, just a wrench is a simple machine. Yes, well, the socket and the screw, yes, would be the axle. Yes, you're, you're exactly right. OK? So Bob, we need to be kind of wrapping OK, up. so I'm going gonna, gonna to move on real quick. All right, so some examples of wheels and axles. You've got your car tires. Gear, someone said gears. Uh, doorknobs, the doorknobs you turn, those are wheels. The screwdriver we talked about and the various wrenches. Now the last one is a pulley. And a pulley is uh, very much related to a wheel. The difference is that a pulley is in the purpose. A pulley is used to change the direction of travel of a, uh, of a rope or a cable or a chain. All right? So some examples of pulleys 
uh, the, the, that's not a real good picture. That's my garage door opener. Okay? The pulley you raise on a flagpole or uh, the bicycle chain. Now, what I'll do real quickly before Ms. Canty kicks me off the stage, and uh, let's see. You young lady, would you mind coming up here, please? Come, come up. So what we've got here is some pulleys. And the more pulleys you add, the easier it is to lift an object. All right, so we've got, we've got these uh, pipes here that weigh a couple pounds each. All right, and, in, and I've lifted them up just so they're barely off the wood. And so what I'd like you to do is, can you read that number there? on that spring, what does that say? It, it says six point something, right? Six point two? Okay, good. What does this one say? Two point four, and uh, what is, let's, let's reverse that, what does that one say? About, yeah, it's a little, it's a little more. So the difference here is one pulley, two pulleys, or three pulleys. The force is distributed. But in order to raise these objects the same distance, ra pull this and ra raise this pipe up about that far. Okay? Good. Now, look how far I have to go to raise it the same distance. A lot, it's a lot easier to raise this, but we have to travel a lot greater distance. And that's why when you look at these machines, thank you, you can set it down. All right, thank you. Well done. So with a pulley, you'll see block and tackle systems. The more pulleys you add, the less force, but you need a lot more cable because you're going to travel a much, much greater distance. All right, now, this is just like school. So we're going to wrap this up. We've covered six different, uh, uh, six different simple machines. So now it is test time. Oh, okay, so here's the first question. What class of simple machine is a spiral staircase? Is it an inclined plane, a screw, or a wedge? All right, so just pick your answer. We're not going to call on anybody. You ready? It's a screw. How many got it right? Yeah, a few of you got it right because, yes, we said stairs are an inclined plane, but remember, they're wrapped. So it's a screw. All right? Next, you got a, a bow from a bow and arrow. Is this a lever, a pulley, or a lever and pulley? All right, get your answer. How about a lever? It's actually two levers. Where is the fulcrum? Right in the middle, right where you hold it, and then you're pulling the, the bottom top back. All right, what if you had a compound bow for you hunters? Lever, pulley, or lever and pulley? Yep. And then the last one is what about a wheelbarrow? There, it's a, it's a comprised of several simple machines. All right. And we've got, how about a lever and a wheel and axle? The lever is the handles, the fulcrum is the axle, and then you've got your wheel and axle. So that brings us to the end of our uh, talk. I hope you enjoyed it. I do have a homework assignment for you. Miss Canty is going to pass out a piece of paper and your homework assignment is to identify three examples of each simple machine. I would encourage you to, you can do this at the museum, especially in our Science in Motion gallery, our big backyard, or outside at the uh, heavy equipment, or at home. See if you can identify three examples of each simple machine. All right, so thank you, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Wonderful Kennedy. round of applause, please, for Bob Gossman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I do want you to know we're going to uh, have our, uh, the fact that we learned today that simple machines are all around us, and the handout is right here. Uh, you can pick it up from uh, this table or from here. And I wanted to clarify that PJ Party is the 14th. 
December 14th. And as you can tell, we have got another group next door to us that came for lunch today. So at this time, we're gonna ask you just to, uh, if you'll exit out these double doors and walk up the hall. And thank you so much for coming okay, so today. so you guys wanna see another simple machine demo? You wanna do a simple machine demo? Okay. And if... Come here. So, what's your name? And... Julian. So, Julian, would it be easier for me to kill you? And if you, you haven't filled out to your, your on uh, tell us lunch and learn survey, please feel free to do Turn that. Turn around. Hold on. Lean backwards. Hey, Miss Canty. We've got a demo. We've got a new demo of a simple machine. We've got a simple. There you go. Oh, thank you. See, wasn't that easier? But now you want to get back to your friends. You got wheels? Yeah, exactly right. Well done. And there's, all, there's also levers on there. The foot brake. Lots of different things. Absolutely. Your homework assignment. Yes, you have homework. There's a lot of examples, especially if you go look at like our helicopter and things. Oh, absolutely. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And now Tyler can uh, can sweep for you. All right? Is he at your table? <laughs> 